This is the liver from a freshly killed laboratory rat, kept cool on ice. We're going to isolate the mitochondria from the liver cells. First, we rinse the liver with cold 0.25 molar sucrose solution. Then it's weighed. Now it's chopped up. And the cells are then ruptured and the organelles released using this homogenizer. The plastic pestle has grooves at the bottom and fits tightly into the glass tube. When it's moved up and down and rotated, organelles from the cells, including the mitochondria, are released into the sucrose solution at the top. A measured volume of sucrose solution is used, corresponding to five times the original weight of the liver. The homogenate is now taken to the ultracentrifuge. The rotor of the machine has been kept in a cold room and the interior of the centrifuge is kept at about 2 degrees centigrade throughout. The tube containing the liver homogenate is exactly balanced by another tube filled with water. and we switch on. The homogenate is first spun at about 2,400 revolutions per minute for 10 minutes. This separates out the nuclei and cell debris which are driven to the bottom of the tube as a solid mass. The lighter mitochondria remain suspended in the supernatant, which is carefully poured off. Then it's centrifuged again. But this time at over 8,000 revolutions per minute. After another 10 minutes, the mitochondria have collected as a pellet at the bottom of the tube. The supernatant liquid is poured off and the mitochondria are suspended in fresh, cold sucrose solution. This is the preparation we shall use in our experiments. We're going to use an oxygen electrode in our investigations. Here's the electrode assembly. The anode is this silver ring, and in the centre there's a platinum cathode. The assembly is mounted on the pillar of a magnetic stirrer. Saturated potassium chloride solution is dropped carefully into the well containing the electrodes. Now a piece of tissue with a small hole in the centre is placed carefully over the electrodes, like this. So that the cathode projects through the hole. Now a thin piece of Teflon is laid on top. This is the reaction vessel. It can be kept at a constant temperature by means of this water jacket. Underneath, there's a rubber ring which fits over the electrode assembly. We shall be measuring changes in dissolved oxygen concentration caused by metabolic activity taking place in the reaction vessel. The bar of the magnetic stirrer is next dropped in.
and there's a plastic stopper. Different solutions can be added to the mixture in the reaction vessel by means of a syringe inserted through a hole in the stopper. Here's the oxygen electrode set up ready for use. It's jacketed with water at 30 degrees centigrade from a thermostatically controlled water bath. The current produced by the oxygen electrode is proportional to the concentration of dissolved oxygen in whatever solution is present in the reaction vessel. This unit has a voltmeter and paper trace recorder to measure the voltage produced on amplification of that current. First a demonstration. Here's some well aerated water. If we put some into the reaction vessel, like this, it must be kept well stirred, hence the magnetic stirrer. The voltmeter indicates that there is oxygen dissolved in the water. If we now add a reducing agent, such as this sodium dithionite, which will use up all the dissolved oxygen, the voltage rapidly falls to zero. We now remove that liquid from the reaction vessel and clean it out so that we can start our experiments using mitochondria. In the reaction vessel, we put solutions of potassium chloride and potassium dihydrogen phosphate, succinic acid to serve as a substrate, and adenosine diphosphate, ADP. To this mixture, we're going to add some of our suspension of mitochondria. A measured volume of the suspensions added. and the stoppers inserted to exclude air from above the reaction mixture. We start the stop clock so that we can get an idea how long the process takes, and we can see immediately that oxygen in the solution is consumed by reactions in the mitochondria, a metabolic process. The paper trace recorder shows how the voltage is dropping as oxygen is consumed. In the reaction vessel, metabolic processes are proceeding at a constant temperature. And as time passes, the pen moves further and further to the left, indicating that more and more oxygen is being used up. Remember, a falling voltage indicates a drop in oxygen concentration. After about two and a half minutes, all the dissolved oxygen is being consumed, and the trace flattens out. Now we're going to repeat the process with the same substances present, together of course with our mitochondria, in the reaction vessel. You can see that oxygen's being used up as metabolism proceeds again. But we now add some sodium azide solution. Almost immediately oxygen consumption stops, the trace flattens out, showing that no more oxygen is being used up. Here's the final pattern, and you can see how oxygen consumption stopped when the azide was added. The same reaction ingredients as before, but this time we inject some potassium cyanide solution. Once again, 
Metabolism ceases almost immediately, indicated by the fact that no further dissolved oxygen is consumed. Remember, the pen moves over to the left when oxygen is being consumed. And here's the final trace. Now to the mitochondrial suspension chloride, phosphate, succinic acid and ADP, we add malonic acid. This time, respiration, the using up of oxygen, continues, but at a slower rate. You can see this more clearly on the final trace. See how the gradient has changed from this to this. What if we have mitochondria, the necessary salts and succinic acid, but no ADP? You can see that respiration proceeds very slowly. The rate of oxygen consumption is very much reduced. Now we add the ADP and the rate goes up again almost straight away. If we have the salt solution and ADP, but no substrate, no succinic acid, the activity of the mitochondria is again suppressed, and the rate of oxygen consumption is very slow. Now add the substrate, and the rate increases again. Finally, let's see what happens if we start with mitochondria, the salts and succinic acid, but instead of ADP, we add dinitrophenol, DNP. Addition of the DNP increases the metabolic rate, and the pen moves further to the left. Now add ADP, And there's not much change. That kink there was caused by some merely transient change as the ADP was added. You can see that the action of the ADP was no longer stimulatory in the presence of the DNP. You should now read the notes provided in the experiment booklet and look again at the results of these experiments. What do they tell us about the action of mitochondria in the metabolism of the living cell?